Okay, we're just gonna test this audio out. I think we're gonna take a little bit longer to get set up today because I messed up the timing of uh, when the live stream starts on the YouTube channel. So uh, I kinda wanna wait for a second for more people to come in. But it actually, it looks like people are coming pretty quick. Anyhow, I'll be on in just a second, guys. Okie dokie, out of chokey. I'm gonna switch this over. One, two, oh, one, two, three. Hello. Oh, camera's there. This is a microphone. Hi, how are you doing, guys? <laughs> Hello. 
and welcome to Club Crochet Live. Today, we are going to be completing our Gulliver, our sleepy little Gulliver. We're making him uh, asleep on the floor this time um, from last week's live stream. So hello. Uh, it looks like I've got my audio all working. I've got... Um... Hi, Maria. Welcome to the channel. Um, yeah, and I got the chat. I can see the chat and everything. I'm all ready to rock and roll. So first, let's go through, you know, the the logistics here. The logistics. I don't know what to call them. Uh, if you want to support this channel, that's what they're called. Uh, so if you want to support this channel, there's a couple ways you can do it. One is to uh, buy merch. So we've got things like stickers. Check these guys out. Um, I've got new stickers coming uh, soon. But these are the stickers that are currently available. We have Professional Hooker in pink and blue. Uh, Stitch, this is the tabletop game that you crochet. And anyone can be a hooker. This one's actually clear, so you can put it on to um, like, uh, your face and still see through it. <laughs> That's what it's for. It's, so it's to put on your face so you can still see through it. Uh, this Today's pattern, oh wait, let me keep going. Uh, the best way you can support the channel is um, to become a Club Crochet member. So members get early access to future patterns, access to rough draft patterns, um, access to exclusive patterns like this Gulliver pattern here. So this pattern is actually a Club Crochet exclusive. So you have to have a membership in order to crochet along with it. Uh, to, to get that, you can actually try a free trial uh, for two weeks, I think. Um, you can learn more at just clubcrochet.com. Uh, subscriptions cost only five dollars a month after the free trial, uh, so it's not you know it's not too bad, and um, you get a bunch of other exclusive content on top of uh, just like normal old patterns like this. I try to come up with at least one new pattern each month um, and one exclusive pattern each month. Uh, another new thing that's going to be coming for Club Crochet members this week is this giant bell bag pattern. So this is gonna become an early access pattern this week, uh, and then maybe a free pattern uh, the week after. This pattern and the Gulliver pattern that we're making today is actually uh, not originally designed by me. This is a designed by another amigurumi artist um, called Sir Pearl Gray, and he might end up being in the chat eventually. Um, he's a very talented amigurumi artist and he makes a bunch of Animal Crossing themed patterns. So if you want more Animal Crossing themed patterns, I know he's working on Flick right now. Um, after our last live stream, we talked about him making Flick. I'm not sure if that's going to be a Club Crochet pattern or if it's going to be on his website. Um, but regardless, uh, you should go check out his stuff. He's got a bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to be doing more collaborations like this in the future. Uh, he's very, very cool. Okay. Uh, and then the other, this this little tiny bell bag is also an exclusive pattern for right now, uh, but it won't be an exclusive pattern for very long. Uh, this one should be out on the channel pretty soon. Okay, so that's the that's the main thing there. Oh oh, I actually do have something else to say, and I forgot to to get it set up because I'm a big dum dum, but. Um, Pro Club Crochet members also get kits mailed directly to their door with all the materials that they need. Let me grab what, what was this kit. So this month, we're, uh, the kit was for a crocheted brontosaurus. And I actually ended up making a lot of extra ones of these. Uh, so if you want to get a brontosaurus, uh, go to clubcrochet.com slash shop or just clubcrochet.com. You can go to the shop and I'm going to have these available for purchase. And I'm also going to have full kits available um, pretty soon with, there we go, all the dinosaurs involved in the little mini dinosaurs. And um, yeah, uh, I think I need to pause this because I think the internet's going to be confused. Um, yeah, so this is this month's kit. It was just mailed out yesterday um so it should if you are a pro member it should be coming to you pretty soon and i have uh, a little bit of overstock to sell uh, if you're interested in getting it and then we'll have uh the other kits with everything else involved very soon okay well i think that's the main gist of everything i wanted to tell you i have a um 
a new idea for a little halftime show. I mean, it's not really new. We've been doing it every month or every time. But I wanted to start doing a show and tell halftime show where I show you the things that I've been making this week because um, I have some pretty cool things that I think you're going to like. They're right next to my coffee that I just put down. So let's hope I don't spill my coffee on them. My glasses are disgusting, so I'm going to wipe those off and check out the chat. Hello, Sarah. Hello, DD Maps. We got Lizzie. Hey, Sir Pearl Gray's there. Dang Nabbit. And a, a, a name I cannot pronounce, but I think it's Russian. And I've seen you in here before. Hello. And hey, Don. Okay. So today we are making Gulliver. Um, I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton for this pattern. Uh, and you, I'm using the colors blue, white, black, and yellow. You also need brown for the eyebrow, but we've already finished the face uh, in the last live stream. So we're going to be working on the body this time. And we want to make our guy laying down like that. I'm using worsted weight cotton yarn, and because of that, I'm using a size G 4 millimeter crochet hook. Maybe I should move this down a little bit. Let's see. What happens if I do this? That's not bad. After cleaning my glasses, now I got a little sand, or not sand, dust in my eye. Wah. Okay. Steffi, first time live. Well, hello. Welcome. Welcome. Um, yeah, so this is the crochet hook I'm using. You'll also probably want a pair of scissors, some a darning needle. Uh, and if you want to go directly to the pattern, uh, it's available right there. Clubcrochet.com slash Gulliver. Uh, and again, it is a Club Crochet exclusive, so you will need a membership account to access it. But uh, you can get a free trial if you want to just try it out. And you, if you want to, go ahead and cancel it. No hard feelings whatsoever. But it is the best way to help support this channel if you're interested. Um, okay. D&D uh, &D Maps is making, after he finishes his fungaloid, what other Stitch characters should he make next? He is rocking and rolling, dudes. He made a, uh, a, we've been chatting back and forth. He made some liz lizard folk and a bunch of other really cool characters. We've been working on some ideas back and forth, but I'll save that a little, I'll save a little bit of that for, um, the halftime show. And we'll get this bunch of white yarn here. And we won't accidentally tie a knot in it. <laughs> Allie. Okay, I'll call you Allie. Uh, yeah, I agree with Lizzie. Do a troll. It's probably been a second since you've done a troll. Once you get going into those other characters, unstitched, it doesn't... Um, you end up not making as many goblins and trolls and stuff. I bet it's been a long time since you've done a goblin, too. Um, okay. There's a game called Oobletz that is right up my alley. That's what Ding Nabbit says, so I gotta check that out. But I, I hope I remember that. Oobletz. Okay, so for the body, we're gonna start with that white yarn here, and we're gonna get rid of all this extra hair. Look at that. You can't see it, but it's a bunch of my hair. My hair is so long, I just can't get a haircut. There's nowhere to get haircuts right now. And I want one. <laughs> BB. Hey, BB. But there is just no options for haircuts right now. I'm wondering if a lot of you guys are in the same boat because I know a lot of you are from America. And here in America, haircuts are kind of off the table right now. Which, you know, I think it's the right thing to do. It's just frustrating because I don't like my hair this long. If you look at it right, there's it's actually kind of looking like a mullet right now. So you can see right back here. My long flowing party in the back. <laughs> I don't trust myself with hair clippers, Crystal. And the reason is because I have very curly hair and I don't want to shave my head. I don't think I look very good with a shaved head. 
And Jules can't do it. I'm sorry, Belle Belle, but that is just not the case. That is from her mouth directly. She is not, she does not trust herself. And honestly, I don't trust her that much either. Okay, let's go like this. Let's see if we can get this down and then up more. So I can sit back and relax a little bit more. Please don't give yourself a quarantine face. What is a quarantine face? Is that when you shave your, your head? Yeah, curly hair can be tough to tough to work with. Um, but, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm starting to feel like I might have to shave it all off if I still, if I keep going crazy. Last time, when I, last time I had hair this long, um, slash longer was in high school. It used to be so long, like down to my shoulders. And when it gets that long, I get really long curl, like ringlets, uh, which is really cool. Actually, it's, 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 it's nice. It's fun. My mom really liked it when it was that long. She was so upset when I decided to cut it all off. Oopsies, I did that one wrong. Okay, so we got a little bit different of a... So, Sir Pearl Gray does his uh, patterns just just slightly different than I do. Um, well, it's not that he does his patterns different than I do. It's just that he does techniques that I don't normally do, and I think vice versa. So, it's really cool to have um, to be able to collaborate with him on this pattern because I get to learn a lot of new techniques one of them is coming up in just a second. It's a way that you make the um, t-shirt go over the clothes, or over the, the body. That doesn't make much sense until you see what I'm talking about. Let me just finish this round, and I think it's the round after this. Yes, okay. Yeah, so what's cool is you make the body just like this little this little bit right here. And this is going to be his bum right there on the bottom right there. And then you'll make the shirt that goes over it. And you just kind of like continue on. Finish with the slip stitch and then we cut it short. Pull that there. And see what you do is you grab this blue john here. And you read the chat. That's what you're supposed to do. Have I ever hurt my hands crocheting before? Yes, definitely. Um, that that was a question from uh, Jelly Bean. Yes, I have hurt my hands crocheting before uh, a few times, just crocheting way too much, you know? Uh, it happens a decent amount of... Um, one, two, three. Seven, eight. Sorry, I need to count. Thirteen, fourteen, seventeen. There we go. Um, yeah, I. So I've, I have. When I used to crochet beanies, so that, that was how I originally got um, really into crocheting was making beanies, and I would do like four or five beanies a day, and that was way too much. I would, I would start to get carpal tunnel in my hands, so I'd have to wear this like thing over my hand that would compress my hand in. Uh, and make it so I could still crochet, but not not do as much damage to my hands. Um, but I haven't really had it that bad since then, uh, because I can realize when I'm starting to go a little too hard on my hands, and then I have to change it up. Um, Sir Pro Gray says this that that this shirt took a lot of trial and error, and I have to tell you, man, you killed it. This is um, it is a very 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 cool technique. I. I when I first saw it, when I was working on your rough draft, I was like, what? I don't get it. How is this going to even work? And it totally works. It totally does. So I think I'll start in this stitch right here. We'll see how that goes. Get this one out of the way. We'll actually work around that. And we'll get rid of this tail here. Um, question... What is the difference between acrylic and cotton yarn? Oh man, there is a lot of difference. So, 
I'm going to start off by saying I am uh, much, I, I much more prefer cotton yarn than I do acrylic yarn. And there are going to be a few reasons that I'll tell you why in just a second. But the main difference is that acrylic yarn is made with plastic. It, it's, it's basically just plastic uh, threads into yarn. Um, as, whereas cotton is made with uh, the plant, cotton plant. Um, so it's a more natural fiber. That's the main, that, or that's one of the big reasons why I really like cotton a lot more than acrylic is that um, it's a natural fiber. It's better for the environment. It decomposes uh, eventually. It takes a while, but you can recycle it. Um, whereas acrylic is not that way. Um, also, a big part about the difference between acrylic and cotton is that acrylic is um, a much... Uh, it's it's a, just a much different fiber. It's more um, like fuzzy, basically. Uh, it can depend on the type of yarn that you're getting. Um, different yarn works in different ways, but... Um, for me, most cases, acrylic ends up looking a little cheaper, in my opinion. It looks a little bit more, um, I don't know, just like uh, cheaper. I guess that's the best way to say it. Um, in addition, acrylic yarn is is much, much less uh, moldable. That, that is just a personal, I guess, I... Uh, preference there but when you look at these characters here you'll see that a lot of my characters they kind of like mold I kind of like use the cotton yarn to mold it into a specific uh, way so like you can see if I pinch it it holds that shape of me pinching it so it's kind of like clay in that way whereas acrylic doesn't really give you that kind of um, feeling uh, and yeah I mean I could go through like a million things like this. Let's see, what are other people saying? Yeah, there's a lot of different uh, natural fibers that you can use to avoid the plastic. Um, uh, cotton is easier to wash and dry. That is also true. Uh, cotton's going to be a little bit more expensive, um, but we're not talking a lot. I mean, lily sugar, balls of lily sugar and cream um, which is, it is a big, uh, I like using them a lot because they have a lot of different options for color. Um, that's something about cotton is that it holds dye colors really, really well. Um, not that acrylic doesn't, but uh, cotton can, you can get a bunch of different colors in cotton. And Lily Sugar and Cream, the one that I most often use, is a really um affordable uh it's going to be a little bit more expensive than acrylic yarn because you can't buy it in the kind of like one pound blocks that you can with um acrylic yarn like acrylic yarn you know you can get those like huge groups of acrylic yarn where it's like a big ball for like four bucks um but honestly you don't need that much yarn for for amigurumi anyhow uh i don't need like a huge thing of one color i need a bunch of little things of different colors so yeah that's that's another thing that i reason i like using cotton more i guess i'm kind of rambling now let's see so i have done that okay so it's just single crochets from here i screwed up right here and it's bugging me see i've got this little this little bit right there his little, but you know what? His tail's gonna have to be sewn on anyhow, so maybe I'll just try to avoid that by using, or I can do this. Let's see if I can pull it in a little bit, pull that out. Yeah, I goofed it there. Oh well, that's fine. No one, I, I, I shouldn't have pointed it out. Yeah, you can't dye acrylic. I've never dyed yarn, but um, I've always wanted to try. This yarn that I'm currently using, this blue one, 
is actually a yarn called Cotton Ease it, uh, from Lily or from Lion Brand, and this is a discontinued yarn, discontinued color. I just ran out of the blue that I needed for um, the shirt, so I had to use this discontinued yarn. Um, and this yarn is actually 50/50. It's half acrylic, half cotton, and I loved this yarn uh, back in the day because it just uh, just love the look of what it looks like crocheted up um, but they don't make it anymore so it doesn't really matter and now I, I transition to mostly all cotton anyhow yeah exactly what Steffi said uh, cotton is cotton is really good it, you can make things really stiff uh, just like how I was saying you can you know mold this and pinch it and twist it in different directions Crystal Burns loves to dye yarn. I wish I did dye yarn. I, I really got to give that a shot. Me and Jules need to try that sometime. That way I can make a col like colors that I don't have and I can't find. That would be really cool. And then we'll do this little decrease here. I gotta sit back a little bit. I'm kind of hunched over. <clears throat> BB asks, who is my favorite YouTuber slash YouTubers? Um, my current favorite YouTuber uh, is probably um, the Craftsman, Steady Crafting. He is a, uh, he's got a, a YouTube channel called Steady Crafting uh, where he just makes, he, he does a lot of clay and uh, resin work. So resin work meaning like, um, he basically makes like plastic little toys. Uh, he is very talented and I just love the way he does videos. He's very chill. He's kind of like the Bob Ross of like, uh, of just like general crafting. He's just so relaxed and silly and I very much suggest his channel. Um, I recently did a video where, uh, he's all the way over there, but I, I recently did a video where um, he had a and ask out to a bunch of his followers to make a uh, a little puppet of him uh, saying his tagline, Hello, and welcome to the Craftsman Show. My name is your host, the Craftsman. He's very cool. I highly suggest him. Another YouTuber that I would highly suggest, once I figure out what happened with this yarn. One second. Uh, another YouTuber that I really admire a lot, and I would say is a good friend of mine, uh, or at least a friend, uh, is uh, Barnaby Dixon. Barnaby Dixon makes, um, sorry, I keep bumping the camera. Um, Barnaby Dixon is a puppet maker, but he makes very tiny puppets, um, as well as he, he is a, uh, a musician, and he's just a talented crafter in, in many different aspects. So I would highly suggest checking out Barnaby Dixon and um, uh, Steady Craft and The Crafts Miami. Those are my favorite fellas. Five. I actually support both of them on Patreon because I like their stuff so much. I, I actually support like <laughs> like 40 people on Patreon. Four, five. There we go, and then that invisible decrease. Okay, let's get back to that chat here. Yeah, definitely check them out. Um, have I ever tried making any Disney amigurumi? Yeah, I've made a few different Disney characters, but um, I kind of try to, I try to avoid um, copywritten characters. That I say that as I'm making Gulliver, but. Um, yeah, I try my best to, to make, to avoid uh, copyrighted characters if I can. Uh, so, especially with Disney, I mean, they can be, they can throw down the hammer pretty quick. So I, I try to avoid it, although I have made some like Marvel characters and stuff in the past. Um, but that was before they were Disney. Yeah, so Sir Pearl Great says that 
finish them. Yeah, so Surfo Gray is a, um, in, he started doing YouTube videos uh, recently. We're gonna be working together, I think, doing a video on here maybe in the future. Uh, I don't know, we're gonna, we have a call next week to talk about stuff, but um, apparently he's a very tight crocheter. He, he crochets very tightly. So when he crochets, he uses a larger crochet hook. Um, to, to help with uh, his tension, but I guess he says in the chat here that it's a nightmare on his wrists. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Okay, let's see. Where were we? I think we're getting down to 10 years ago. One, two, three, four, and then we do this. Next week, we're going to be doing another one of Sir Pearl Gray's patterns on a uh, live stream. Um, and we're, we might try to get um, him, Sir Pro Gray himself in here to join us uh, while like to crochet it together. We're gonna be making this giant bell bag. I'm gonna be doing it with bulky yarn, so we might have a different setup. I might have to do it over on a table or something because um, it's gonna be big. Like I think, I'm thinking it's gonna end up like this big. Uh, We'll see. It might even get bigger than that. I don't know. But it might take a couple days to, to actually complete. Yeah, Barnaby Dixon is rad. Um, okay, where were we? Um, okay, that's the end of that, actually. So we can go ahead and slow stitch here. Um, Sir Pro Gray asks if I have done any markets or conventions before? Yes, I have. Um, I have done, so the the main one that I've done is VidCon, um, the video convention in Anaheim. Um, that's my favorite place to do things just because uh, I've gone for the past four or five years now. Um, so I've got a lot of friends there now. And um, last year I did a pretty big convention there and uh, that was pretty cool. I sold a lot of goblins and stuff. Um, but I, I don't know, I have a hard time selling my character, my, the things I crochet because I always wanna keep a copy for myself whenever I make stuff. So I have a hard time uh, letting, letting go of stuff. Uh, but I've done a few. I should I should probably do more to be completely honest. Um, Jules would definitely agree with that, seeing as I have so many crocheted things around here. But obviously markets are kind of not an option right now. But maybe in the future. Um, I want to do stitches. Stitches is a yarn convention. Um, and they're all over the place. There's one in, um, there's one here in like San Jose, which is close to San Francisco here. Uh, and they, yeah, I, I want to do a convention there for Club Crochet and have a Club Crochet booth. Um, and I want to do Dragon Con really bad because I want to show Stitched there. I think that would be really fun. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. Uh, Disney, uh, I'm replying to Sir Pogue right there. Uh, Disney reps, he says Disney reps patrol conventions to make sure artists aren't, yeah. Um, yeah, they not only do they patrol that, they also patrol online. Like I've gotten cease and desist from Disney before. Um, I've gotten a cease and desist from Marvel before. And I, I don't think I'm supposed to mention that honestly, but it's like, what are you gonna do? Sue me? Probably. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, they don't like make people making fan art, which I think is silly personally, but it's not, it's not my character. Oh. There we go. Um, I've also, Fox is the worst. They give me cease and desists pretty often for different stuff. I got a cease and desist once from them for Futurama, and I was like, ugh, are you kidding me, guys? <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so now I'm, I finished the body. So this is gonna be sewn on like this. I think like, like that. So he'll be like laying down. And then I'm gonna do one arm like that and one arm like out. And then his two feet out like that. But now we gotta crochet his feet. Oh, that's so cool, man. Okay, so D&D Maps is a big fan of the, the Fungaloid, um, also known as the Mushroom Man, uh, the Fun Guy, or the um, the Myconoid if you're uh, in if you're in D&D mode. It's basically a little Mushroom Man, and I am a huge fan of that one too. Uh, I've been I've been trying to avoid putting it out um, publicly publicly right now uh, on Louis Loops stuff. Uh, I've got just like a plan right now for Stitched where I want to do um, a Kickstarter for full kits of Stitched with like all the materials that you need to make your characters and the board and like everything. Um, and I want to do one, a Kickstarter for 3D printed Stitched characters and one maybe for clay characters. I'm not really sure just yet, uh, but yeah, I'm starting to work on that process right now, uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, but yeah, so I've been kind of avoiding posting about new characters on Louis Loops very often. Uh, but except for on the Patreon, on the playtesters, I'm going a little bit crazy there. I actually have a new character I've been working on for Stitched, uh, and it wasn't originally designed as a character for Stitched, but it is a new little thing. I, I made it this week, and then I was like, oh my god, this could be a character for Stitch. So I'll show you in the halftime show. And I think you guys are going to dig it. Okay. There we go. I should have made this end a little longer, but I didn't, so... That's just the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's a quote from, uh, I think that's a quote from Bruce Almighty. That's so cool, D&D Maps. I, I think that is just so cool that other people are playing that game. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play it in like months now because Jules isn't really that big of a fan of playing that game. And uh, my main buddy that plays it with me all the time, uh, you know, social distancing. We don't want to be breaking that with each other. Let's go ahead and do this tail end here. Go through the middle. I'm having a hard time keeping this inside out. Keeping this from becoming inside out. There we go. But that helps a lot. So, Sir Pro Gray, I noticed something on your um, your flick pattern that, or the thing that you've been making. That uh, just a little suggestions I I think you should consider is instead of doing the spikes on the back of the head um, with crocheted pieces that you sew on, you should just do little the little spikes like this, the spiked bobble stitch. It would save you so much time. I don't know, just an idea, something I noticed. I know you're still in the rough draft uh, area, and you definitely are the designer. You don't have to ever listen to me for that kind of stuff. You're the designer, not me. But just a just a thing that I noticed that might help make things a little easier. I don't know. I don't know. But I love he's making flick right now. Go check him out on Instagram. Uh, I think he's just at Sir Pearl Gray. And check out his flick. He's making a flick right now and it's super cute. He's, I think Flick's my favorite character from uh, Animal Crossing. My favorite NPC. Mm. 
Although the the um the new otter is really cool. I love that new otter. Lori Mac Michelle asks, can you please give me a shout out? No. <laughs> Just kidding. There you go. No problemo. You were okay. Yeah, I think I think it might be kind of fun. I don't know. I might make uh, make things a little easier. I don't. Again, I don't want to be like uh, telling you how to how to do what you do. You do it. You do an amazing job. It was just an idea I had. All right. Now we're making the little toes. There we go. There you go, you see his little foot? Got little little duck foot. All right. Go like that. Okay. Pinch those toesies. And then hide this end. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. That there's like, he's got so many different kinds of spikes. Yeah, I was thinking either for the back, the, the back of the head looks like he might have, you might have to do bigger spikes. And then the yellow spikes on his head and uh, on his, for his nose and over the eyebrows, um, maybe you could do the spike bobble. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, BB, that's so nice. Thank you. Um, Crystal Burns, yeah, there's a new otter. Uh, I can't remember what his name is. Sir Pearl Gray, what's that guy? What's the otter's name? The one that gives inspirational quotes that I, I'm a big fan of. I love otters just in general, um, but this new little otter, he's so cute. He he likes scallops, so you bring him scallops, and then he gives you. Um. The on, the only angel girl asks, have I tried to make some uh, Avatar Last Airbender characters? Yes, I've made a few. Um, I've made Appa, Aang, Katara, uh, Momo, um, but they're all like pod people versions. I don't know where they're at right now, but I do have some made. I need to maybe consider uh, redoing those for as patterns instead. Pascal, Pascal, that's his name. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know he's from New Leaf, but he's new to to um New Horizons, you know? But you're right. He isn't he isn't new new. I guess I guess um Yeah. There there's a lot of like reused characters. You know who I miss from Animal Crossing is Mr. Rossetti. I know he, I guess like the idea is that he runs the, the, um, the helicopter service that rescues you if you get lost or, or stuck somewhere. Um, but you never see him and I miss Mr. Rossetti. He was, he was like my favorite character from the first game. I would reset my game just to like, just to get Mr. Rossetti. I also miss, um, gyroids. They don't have gyroids in it. I'm wondering if they're going to add those in a future update because those things were so cool. I really liked collecting the different kinds of gyroids. And it's kind of a bummer that they don't they haven't come up again. Also, Jules has pitfalls. She got the recipe for pitfalls. I can't find that recipe anywhere 
and I really want it because I really like pitfalls. I like to make, I like to take them to friends' islands and then bury them behind trees and make them fall into it later on. I know it's it's a jerk thing to do, but it's very fun. <laughs> Melbell needs a giant Kirby pattern for their nephew for Christmas. That would be a really a pretty easy pattern for you to uh, probably just design, uh, Melbell. I think because all you need to do basically is make a giant ball, and then two two smaller balls for feet, and then you just need to do like you could even use felt for the mouth and the eyes and stuff. I have a little miniature uh, Kirby pattern that I think I should probably add to the site pretty soon. Um, yeah, I have so many patterns I need to add to the site. Oh yeah, I miss Booker. Oh yeah, I, I, loved, I loved sitting back really far and waiting for, I think it was Booker, to fall asleep because he would end up falling asleep after a long period of time. Yeah. We need to, I need to show you guys Jules' island soon. Um, she has got the most incredible island now on Animal Crossing. I think you guys would love it. I mean, she plays a lot, so her island is getting really put together. And she does this thing. She does this thing with her island where she creates other accounts and names them things like farm or... Um, She's got one named school, and then she makes their house into a school, um, and it, it's crazy. The amount of work that she does to these these other houses. So she's got, I think, five other accounts on her, other than her main profile. So she's got jewels, and she's got a hotel, she's got a school, she's got uh, a farm, um, a diner. The diner was actually the first one. It's very cool. She's she's uh, kicking butt in in on her island. I I would love to um, show you guys her progress soon. Yeah, yeah. You can get a little wonky with those with uh, with Kirby. I could I could imagine. Yeah, because I guess they need to be more like ovals than just straight circles, huh, Melville? There we go. All right, and I think it might just be time for... Let's see how long we go. All right, we'll we'll do we'll do the um, we'll work on the arms first, and then and then I'll show you guys the halftime show. Halftime show brought to you by you. Once I finish this uh, sleeping Gulliver, I'm definitely gonna have to take some pictures on the beach with him like asleep near the water. And just be careful that he doesn't get too sandy. But that would be super fun. All right, so we got our little feats. Wah, 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 wah. You know, I have played a few Kirby games, and I gotta say, I um, I'm not a huge fan of Kirby games. I don't, I don't, I don't hate them. They just can be a little bit boring. I wish they were a little bit more um, put together. You know. Um. Okay. What are we doing now? 
Oh, we're making the arms. Hey, Taffy. And to and Toad. Hi, Toad. But uh, it looks like looks like mods have have quieted you for a second. Don't spam the chat, please. 7 p.m. is your favorite new leaf tune. I have my favorite one is I can't remember. You know, I think it was like 11 11 p.m. or something. And hello, Jose. Uh, okay, so we're making the wings now, and we don't start with this. We start with blue. Yeah, I love uh, I loved using Kirby in Smash Brothers, uh, in in Melee. Oh, and sixty four. Oh my gosh, sixty four Kirby is nasty. He is he's very good. But um, I like uh, in in the current Super Smash Brothers, I'm all about Yoshi in Su Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'm very much a Yoshi player. I'm very good with him. Like, really good. <laughs> I play pretty much every single day. <laughs> I'm sure Melbo sees me on... Melbo and I are friends on the Switch, and I'm sure you see me playing Super Smash Brothers all the time. One, two, three, four. Okay. I love, uh, by the way, Philip, your um, technique to make these arms is very cool. I very much uh, like how they, how the wings turned out. I think I did some very slight alterations on the wings to make it more of like a, a, a bump, you know, more like that. Um, but the the general idea for how you made the wings is really really cool. I like it. So great job It's very clever. It's very clever. Oh, yeah Yeah, I did like Kirby's epic yarn a lot um, That was the one on the DS right that you drew Okay, pasta la pizza from Denmark. Good night. Jules taught me a bunch of uh, words in your language yesterday, but I, I can't remember them. She taught me how to say uh, something goes over the water. The bird flies over the water and the boat flies in the water. I don't know. Pico! Oh my gosh, welcome! Welcome, welcome to the fantastical world of Club Crochet. <laughs> welcome. I'm so happy you have joined us. What pattern uh, brought you into the site? Now we gotta switch to the white yarn here. I think I'm gonna do so for this for this arm to make it more of a um a uh more seamless end. I think I'm gonna use the the seamless end technique. Uh, so if you don't know what I'm talking about here, I have a video for it. Um, I think if you just go to clubcrochet.com slash seamless, you can find it. It's uh, basically you just slip stitch into the next stitch. You chain one with the new color, and then you single crochet into the same place that you slip stitched into um, with your new color, and it makes a more seamless end. So I'm going to be doing that for these arms here for the colors in between because it switches from uh, blue for the the top of the sleeve and then switches to white um, 
and yeah just just letting you know about that there we go okay and does it increase up for the white yes it does okay so one two three and then we increase pretty close. We don't really need any of it. I don't think. We do need this end, though. So let's pull this through the inside. Stranger danger! Okay, Toad Mag, I'm sorry. What is your name? Whoa, that is a crazy... I don't know how you did those characters, dude. Whoever said no! I don't know how you did those characters. That is crazy. Oh, man. Yeah, there's a bunch. Yeah, so Pico, you should check out the... Uh, the... The site. I've got... I mean, if you just go to clubcrochet.com slash browse... Um, you'll see all of the, the patterns that I have. I try to come out with at least one a month uh, and add it to that, but uh, sometimes I do even more than that. And then I do an increase right there. Right? Right, let's see. Yes, and now I just do two rounds of single crochets. The arms might be the trickiest part of this pattern. I don't know. What do you think, Philip? I, th I would say probably the arms are the trickiest for me. Just because there's a lot going on in them. Uh, but they are really fun to make. Especially when you get to the, the end here. When I did this guy's arms, I actually did a round before the arms of a half color change. Which is why you can see that the... The hand there, there, there's a very um, clear distinction between where the hand is and where the fingertips are, um, and that's a because uh, I did half color changes in the round before. Um, but I found that there's already so much going on in the, in the hands that that half color change doesn't really make enough of a difference for me to to warrant doing it. You know what I mean? It's just like so complicated to do half color changes on top of doing all these other things. Um, yeah. Okay, so we are on round six. Round six. Um, yes, D&D Maps asks, do I remember my brown fungaloid? Uh, do you remember how you made the little notch at the base of the cap? Yes, I do. Um, so what I did was, when I was working into that round, uh, I did a... Um, uh, I replaced three, two or three uh, stitches there with the following. I did a half double crochet. I chained one, and then I slip stitched into the same place where I put that half double crochet. And then I changed, chained one, and then I worked into the next stitch and did another half double crochet into the next stitch, and then I uh, continued on in single crochets, and that just made, that just made a little like, just a little cutout, so it looked like it was a the cutout of a of a um, of a um, mushroom. Uh, Steffi asked, does Jules speak Danish? So Jules is my girlfriend. Uh, no, she doesn't. But she had um, her first boyfriend in high school uh, is Danish. And, and they're still good friends. Uh, so she spoke a little bit of Danish because of him. So she knows like 
three or four phrases. I'll see if she can come in and and uh, share some of her of her Danish wisdom. <laughs> she she knows how to speak. Uh, I say the numbers and then like just like a few phrases like um, dinner was wonderful and things like that. Yeah, no problem, D and D maps. Let me know if you have any other questions about that. Okay, so now what I do is I flatten these so that they connect. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Wait. One, two, three, four, five. Is that right? No. That connects with that stitch. So what's cool is that you flatten this these wings like this, and you work the next round of stitches into both of the um, bits here to connect them. Toad. Dude, you gotta stop, man. You're gonna get. We're gonna have to ban you if you keep just spamming the chat with periods. It's. I I don't want that to happen. Please stop. Um. Okay. So th this is seriously, dude. Th that's like that's your last warning. Stop. You do this every time. Um. Okay. Danish is really hard. Uh. It is very, it's a very difficult language, but man, it sounds so cool. It's so like, it's so unique. And okay, so we flatten to the five stitches and working into both stitches, we chain two, so we chain one, we already, there's the two. And then we do a half double crochet like that. And let's make sure these stitches match up. Four. That's pretty good. Yeah, so see see how this is going to make a... You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. And then we slip stitch one into the same stitch. Right? Yes. Put this in the brackets. And then we do it again into the next one. And you see how it's like it's like flattening them, but making like little bumps in the wings? Kind of cool. Let's do it. So we're we're seeing some people from England right now. We got some people. Um, Wow, Steffi speaks fluent Danish. That's interesting. Where's everybody from? Where's everybody at right now? Where's everybody living? Watching from? I think we only do four of these um, these wings. One, two. He has making like little bumps. All right, cool. And then we got one more here. And then I'm gonna slip stitch into this one to finish it up. We got, whoa. Hungry, gee, Louise, we got, I didn't know you were from Hungary. Stranger Danger, that's interesting. Quebec, Quebec, oh, just me is in California. Me too, my friend. We got someone from Texas. d, &D Maps is in Pennsylvania. Uh, please make this explanation of what, I'm sorry, I must have missed. I think I'm, I, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but I think I've missed something there. Um, okay, Alberta, Canada. Oh yeah, I knew you were in Alberta.
Please put what back on? I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. Okay, so we got... One of the two hands. C'est fini. How beautiful. No? C'est très belle, très belle. Now, hand number two. Please repeat this broadcast. I don't, I'm sorry, but I don't fully understand what you mean. Stranger danger. Oh, Hungarian. And okay, we got a net, someone from Denmark. We got Oregon. Steffi, that's so cool that you're watching from Denmark. What time is it in Denmark? <laughs> Okay, so we've got we've got the beginnings of the hand number two, and then we can do our show and tell. I want to come up with a a fun little jingle to do in the halftime show for show and tell. Where it's like da 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 da, Louis halftime show, Louis show and tell or something. I don't know. <laughs> Stupid. I'm dumb. All right. Nice. You're a night owl. You're a night owl, Steffi. I'm also a night owl. I usually stay up to like 3 or 4 a.m. Which is why I start this live stream at 1 p.m. Because I wake up very late. <laughs> Um, okay, continuing on in these Huns. California. Me too. I sure do like it here in California. Although it is expensive, at least in San Francisco. Very pricey. One, two, three, four, yes. So I've been trying to consider um, some different kinds of hats. So we need to make a, um, a pirate hat for Mr. Gulliver eventually because he's got his new pirate version of him, which is, is named something special, isn't it? Isn't there like a new name for this pirate Gulliver? I can't remember what it, it is. Is it Gulliver or something? I can't remember. Anybody know? Just me is not a night owl. <laughs> I am very much a night owl. All good, Dang Nabbit. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you next week. Gullivar. Yeah, it is Gullivar. Of course. We could be friends. One, two, three, four, five. And then I think I switch here. Eight. I switch over. Am I right about that? Let's see. Eight. Yes. Nope. I want to do it with the slip stitch situation. <laughs> because you don't like the effort of having to swim for for his um, for his communicator parts. Yes, I saw the fireworks start tonight. I saw I saw someone do a um a firework for you know that S symbol from high school where it's like well from my high school where it's like three lines and then the lines all connect so it makes like a, a an S. Okay, so now I am Changing to what? Almost got the arms finished. These arms are so I, dude. I think you can do so much with these, um, with these kinds of arms. I, I think you've got a really cool uh, technique here, Mr. Philip, Monsieur Philip. Now. 
then I think I increase this up to 10. Yes. Yes, of course. No. Oh, wait. No. I know the answer, Menominum. So Menominum says, what's a pirate's favorite letter? And then DMAP said, R? No, no, no. He think it be R, but it be the C. <laughs> I hope that was the answer to the joke because uh, that's that's a good one. Yar, you think it be R, but it be the C. Yes, <laughs> I was right. Yar, har, har, har. I definitely think pirates uh, are going to be coming to Club Crochet pretty soon. <laughs> I did get it. <laughs> yes, yes. I think we need much of this white yarn so we can cut it nice and close. Do you guys like the voices that I put on? Or does it just make you guys as confused as it does me? I like being confused sometimes. I just bought Paper Mario. Uh, and it comes, it'll be here tomorrow. So I'm very excited. Uh, I really like the original Paper Mario a lot, but there's a new Paper Mario on the Switch. Paper Mario and the Origami King, I believe that's the name of it. Um, so it's got a lot of origami in it. I love origami. Uh, I think, you know, origami and, uh, and crocheting are like distant cousins. So we, I think, I think we get along together very well. Steffi, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. I really think uh, it's really cool that you're here. And, um, yeah, I I say this pretty much every live stream, but seriously, uh, my Sundays... You guys make my Sundays so much better. I, I'm going to be crocheting Sundays regardless just because I'm addicted to crocheting. But crocheting with you guys is really cool. It's like... It really does feel like a little club, doesn't it? It feels like we're just a bunch of little buds hanging out. And I get to learn about your guys' week, and I get to tell you about mine. And I don't know. I love you guys. Thanks for joining. Okay, enough of that sappy, sappy jazz. Sir Pearl Gray, you have, of course, you've been playing Paper Mario. Dude, I'm telling you, man, we are like kindred spirits. I'm very excited to talk with you next week because we seriously we we jive well I can tell I can tell we jive well I'm so excited to take pictures of this on the beach I think that uh, the internet's gonna really like it oh <laughs> Menominum, you are funny. So, <laughs> so I'm guessing you're, are you crocheting an elephant? Yeah, you're crocheting an elephant for your sister's birthday present. And she's naming it, or he, or, Menominum is naming the elephant either T.S. Elephant, which is great. But I think even a better one is J.R.R. Trunkin. <laughs> that is so good. J.R.R. Trunkin is hilarious to me. Like, seriously, that's a 10 out of 10 name, in my opinion. But you do you. Okay, so what do we got here? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. Yes. Alright, we need a black yarn. Sasha. 
Well, hello, Sasha. It's a pleasure to formally meet you. I, Unfortunately, I might not remember that it's Sasha because I look at the names always, but know that I at one point remembered that it was Sasha. Sasha. I like that name. Good name. Yesterday, Jules and I watched uh, the Psych movie. You guys ever watched the show, TV show Psych from USA? It's on the new, um, it's on that new app. Uh, there's like a new uh, streaming service called uh, Peacock. I think it's from NBC. And uh, it's pretty cool because it's it's actually free. You, can, you don't need to have an account to watch it. And... Um, oh, you don't need to, to pay for it? There we go. Anyhow, the psych, the new Psych movie is very good. I, I liked it. I mean, it's cheesy as heck, uh, but, you know, that kind of comes with the territory, I think. I really like that. I really like the show Psych. Of course you like Psych, Melbell. That is, I could have guessed that. You're like the perfect demographic. <laughs> I don't know why. It just seems like that just makes so much sense to me. And then I just slip stitch it to this one. And let's cut this white yarn because it's getting in the way. And we'll go ahead and stuff these in. I need a steer. Oh, we can use this for a bit. Yeah, you don't really need to, to like, there's so many different opportunities for media now, Genesis, that, um, yeah, it, like, just like you said, you don't, playing video games is, I mean, it's just like, being active TV and you don't really need to watch TV but I do like television for crocheting it makes things a lot easier I like to crochet to something crocheting like by yourself in the quiet in the quiet in the in silence is well I that's crazy to me <laughs> it, that's it's it's difficult for me to do I have to do that when I do my videos and uh, my tutorial videos, and I don't know, I just sometimes have a very difficult time doing that. Because my mind wanders, and then I f lose track of what I'm doing on my project here. That's probably one of the reasons why I like talking um, to you guys while I'm, while I'm crocheting. It makes things... Yeah, I don't know. I just, I just enjoy that. Okay, so we're gonna pull it through here. we got two arms done. And you know what that means. It's time for the halftime show. Brought to you by you. That's right. I mentioned, I forgot to mention in the very beginning that there is another way you could help support this channel if you are so obliged. There is a way that you can do a super chat. So super chat is a way to support the channel uh, if you'd like. If you look at the little chat wherever the chat is down or left or wherever there's a little dollar icon if you want you can press that button do a super chat and your chat will appear on the screen right over mr gull over here right here and i'll move this out of the way just in case uh and you will support the channel directly so if you're interested in supporting the channel that's how to do it but while we're rock and rolling, it's time for some show and tell. This week, I have been crocheting a bunch of different little cool things that I've been excited to share with you. The first thing that I have made that I'm going to be uh, adding, all these things are going to be added to the website eventually, so don't worry, the patterns are coming out eventually. Um, obviously, this might be a little longer than, uh, than you would think. Because it takes a while to make patterns, you know? It takes a second. But the first one uh, that I'm really, really proud of are 
little octopuses. And now what's so cool about these little octopuses is octopi is a, a few things. First off, this is a completely no sew pattern, meaning you don't need to sew anything on. It's just one piece. All you have to do is sew it closed at the end. I'm super duper proud of this pattern. Obviously this one's a little bit different. There's, I have a bunch of different versions. You can move the mouth into different places. And this guy, I even added a little sailor hat to. I made this one last night. And see, he's got different kinds of tentacles. So I'm gonna teach how to do different kinds of parts to them. And check this one out. I made this one last night too. Again, no sewing whatsoever, and I turned it into a squid. I turned it into a squid. Just a prototype. It'll be coming out soon. I'll be adding it probably to Rough Drafts, um, probably tomorrow or tonight. Uh, so this will be added to Rough Draft patterns soon. Um, but I'm so proud of it. It's all, I just think it's so cool that there's no sewing that you need to do at all. It's just like, boom, you, don't, you just have the yarn and you're done. Um, so yeah, these, these I'm very, 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 very proud of. I'm super excited to share them with you. Patterns will be out soonish. And these are also new characters for Stitched that I've been working on. Um, so that'll be coming out eventually as well. They're basically, in Stitched, they're gonna be basically like turrets or cannons. So they attach to the head of like pretend this is the head of a character they attach to the head so they're like a host on their head and they and they can be carried around but they can't move on their own and stuff anyhow these will be coming out soonish uh i'm very 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 proud of them uh i just want to perfect it you know because every night i make something new for them i'm like oh my gosh you could do this oh my gosh you could do that so it's very cool uh, and the second thing that I'd like to share with you, so again, coming out Rough Drafts probably this week. Rough Drafts are available for Club Crochet members only, so you'll need a membership account. But in the Rough Drafts, I ask for your opinions. So if you find any parts of the pattern that are broken, uh, you can give me feedback on them. Uh, and you can let me know even if you have any suggestions like, uh, I think maybe you could reward this better or... I think maybe if you put the mouth a little bit higher, it would look good. Stuff like that. So that's what the rough drafts are for. Um, they're basically to make me perfect the pattern, the written pattern, before I do the video. So if you want, um, there's a bunch of other rough drafts available currently. Uh, here is the next thing I want to show you for the show and tell. This is currently a rough draft. Uh, pattern. It's dwarves. So dwarves, I think I've shown you this before. Dwarves are a new thing for the rough draft patterns. Uh, and this guy is like, he's basically supposed to be inspired by Mr. T. Um, yeah. And so he's a little dwarf. Uh, these, this guy is currently in the rough draft patterns as well as whoop, the relic. Um, this guy's missing his things, but relics are now on the rough draft patterns. These are for stitched as well. These are um, uh, these are a part of the board that you cast magic spells into. Uh, so, yeah, these are also in rough draft patterns. So if you're interested, I think if you just go to clubcrochet.com slash rough draft, you'll be able to reach it. Uh, and thank you very much, Mel Bell, for that. Okay, uh, the next last thing I want to show you for Louis show and tell is now this pattern is a little further out uh, it is not ready to be released yet it's not even ready to go on rough drafts yet it's it's in its early stages so please bear with me it's a big pattern and it's gonna take me a second to get it perfectly right but coming soon a dragon Check it out, look at these wings. I need to make better feet, um, but the hands are made with like spiked baubles and stuff. Big old dragon, I'm gonna be doing spiked baubles for these ears instead of like little sewn on ears like that and stuff. I wanna do a tongue. I basically wanna do a few versions of this and I need to do spikes along the back as well. One with different colors and stuff like that. Um, and you can tell it's all got 
things in it so that we can bend it in whatever ways we want to, including the wings have pipe cleaners in them so you can bend the wings. It's very cool. I'm super duper excited about this pattern. I think the idea is going to be um, maybe this will be the kit for um, uh, for November. I'm not really sure yet, but I'm very, very, very excited about this pattern uh, and excited to share it with you. So coming out eventually. Definitely in the rough drafts first because I'm going to definitely need some feedback, especially when it comes to the wings because they can be a little bit difficult to explain how to make these wings. Uh, so I'm very, very, very excited. Uh, this pattern will be coming out soon. And of course, of course, I'm going to be making this into a stitched character. So you'll be able to control a dragon in stitched, maybe even ride one. Who knows? It's very cute. Very cute. I'll have to make one with bulky yarn too, so it'll be like a big, big dragon. Okay. So that was Louie's show and tell. Let me know if you uh, have what you guys think about all these patterns, you know, in the comments, stuff like that. Because I'm very, very, very excited to share these. Um, I've kind of been going ham this week instead of working on patterns. I've kind of been making rough drafts for stuff. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, he, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely D&D maps. He'll be cost probably even more than 50 gold. It'll probably be like... <laughs> basically your whole team's worth of gold to buy that guy um okay again just just because i love this guy so much look at this cute little squid oh my god no sewing none what's cool is like you work around and then i work up and back oh, it's very cool i'm so excited to share this with you guys okay that was louis halftime show let me have more coffee and respond to the chat if you guys have any questions about any of those things. Melbell, I'll send you the rough draft before the rough draft if you want. Send me a message after this. I'll, 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 I can send you some early, 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 early stuff. Because I have some stuff written, but it needs to be perfecto, of course. Okay. Yeah, you know, I was wondering, does do squid squids have two extra tentacles? Is that is that true? They have do they have two extra long tentacles? Cuz I know I don't remember. I don't I don't remember. Okay. Well, let's keep rocking and rolling here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Sir Pearl Grey. Thank you. I'm very excited about... No, so patterns are definitely my favorite. Um, okay. Oh, they have six legs. But, but... Are you sure? Because I thought what their situation was, they had six legs and two, like, really long arms. Yeah. Yeah, what Crystal Burn said. I think they have two really long ones. So why, why am, just to me, just me, I have a question for you. Why, you keep saying make a squid with only one eye, why? Is that a thing? Is that from something? Um, okay, so. Pico says, not a question uh, about the show and tell, but asked early on the chat and moved too fast. Early, uh, what does early access pa mean on a pattern on the website? So early access means that it's a pattern that will be out um, eventually uh, for free. Uh, so for example, um, this little tiny bell bag right now is early access. So if you have a Club Crochet membership, you'll be able to access this pattern now uh, with the video, the written pattern, everything like that. Um, and it's coming out for free, like at, on YouTube and, and stuff uh, in uh, probably like this week or next. Um, so that's what early access means. It means you get access to the pattern like weeks ahead of everybody else. Oh, like a minion, like a single-eyed minion. Oh, interesting. 
very interesting. I will consider that. See, only Angel Girl. I told you. I told you you'd like that pattern. In the very beginning of the the stream, I saw her say that she was making an octopus, and I was like, "Oh, I've got to show you this. You're gonna love it." I have to hit you up also, uh, Sir Pro Gray, because I noticed that you do your, um, your, uh, magic loops a little bit different than mine, and they look like it might be a little easier, so I need to learn that new technique for magic loops. Um, by the way, I'm making the tail right now, if you are curious of what I'm doing. Um... That's gonna do it right there. Let me just tie it tighter. I think I'm gonna do a. I think I want to work on a video soon where I show like, here's a bunch of different ways to do the magic loop. Here's what a magic loop is, like an explanation video for magic loops. I think that would help people a little bit. Oopsies, I tied that a little tight there. Well, it's not that bad actually. There you go. That little tail is going to go shown on right on the bum. Right there. Okay. Alright, now's the great fun part. Everybody loves it. Everybody's been waiting for it. Sewing everything together. <laughs> then... You know, Sir Pearl Gray, I think um, that might be a cool thing to add then. Just just to be like, here's here's a bunch of different ways to do the magic loop. Here's my favorites and why. That'd be kind of an interesting video. Yeah, no problem, Pico. Yeah, not all patterns are early access. Some patterns are uh, Club Crochet exclusives, like Gulliver, I don't think will be early or will be free. Um, it might be, I might end up coming out with it free for like a day or two, uh, just to like, you know, get people interested in it and just like as an exciting new little, like, hey, limited time free pattern. Um, but yeah, the, oh, I forgot the scarf. I forgot the scarf. Um, but yeah. Okay, so we want to do the scarf now. Which is also a very unique technique. Unique technique. Yeah, your your method for the magic loop looks pro, dude. I'm very uh, I'm excited to learn it. El borda, bordardo. El Bordado has to say bye. Well, bye-bye, Bordado. I'll see you maybe next week. Three. Seventeen. There we go. Yeah, Mel Bell's not a fan of my magic loop, and that's okay. There's Yeah, there's a bunch of different ways. So, uh, yeah, I think it'd be cool to to do a little bit of research of the different ways to do magic loops and, and share that um, with people so that they could, uh, they could pick and choose a little bit easier. You know, whatever makes crocheting easier. That's kind of the point of this channel. All right, so we're going to skip the first one. Let me crochet six. One. Four. 
Yeah, I don't even know where I found where I learned how to do the magic loop originally. I think from a book. I think I have a book of like crochet techniques that it taught me there. I'm pretty sure the way that I do it, the reason I know about it is because it's easiest to like explain. I, it, it's pretty, I mean, I don't know if it's easiest because I need to do the research into that, but I do find that it is relatively easy to explain. One, two, three, four, and then, okay. One, two, and then a slip stitch. Hello. It's going great. Would you like to uh, say hello? Jules is here and wants to say hello and hello. maybe she can uh she can say some of her <gasps> Danish. Oh, my Danish? Have you been talking about my Danish? Yes, I have. Um so I took a a free learning how to speak Danish course on Rosetta Stone before it was a really popular um app or you know, service. And these are the phrases I remember. Fiskinus swimmer utne vennel, which means fish swim underwater. Flumiskine flu o vennel, which is the plane flies over the water. I can count to ten. Eight, ton, three, four, fem, six, su, old, neat, teat. And I can say, Yaelska dai, I love you. Tak famel, thanks for the meal. And little words like mua, which means mom, and fa, which means father and that's all i know half of that's from rosetta stone and half of it's from dating a danish guy for two years but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's that's that that was like 10 years ago too people are a lot of people are saying hi hi hello for those who don't know me i'm his girlfriend and i knit and you can um follow me on nip nip by jewels on yes Instagram. follow her on nip by jewels yeah she is a very talented knitter. She makes uh, yes. garments more. I do. I make sweaters mostly, but some shawls, hats, uh, cowls. So if you're interested in knitting, I think go, I need to on. pull up a picture of what Gulliver looks like sleeping. Which one? The pirate one or the normal one? Normal one. He's really cute when he's sleeping. I really like the pirate Gulliver because it gives you way cooler stuff. Look at those eyelashes. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got beautiful eyelashes. I want those eyelashes. So, wait, let's see Hello. what to do. Oh, yeah, Hi, Bob. Get, go and scratch, really scratch that. Oh, this is the best thing ever. Girls give good, really good back scratches. <laughs> He's obsessed with back scratches. I can't it's crack true. his back, so this is what I can do. <laughs> mm. Well, I'm going to go back to playing Animal Crossing in the other room. Okay. <laughs> I don't have Gulliver today, but there's a fireworks show at 7. Yes. Fireworks. Okay, so now we are just sewing things together, uh, which is, oh no, look at this. I messed this up somewhere. I do. Oh, I see what I did. Okay, never mind, I fixed it. Um, okay, so we want his legs like more on the bottom like this. So it'll be like, Because normally I did the I do the legs on the outside like that, but I think I'm gonna have to put them on the bottom one because I want them to be sticking straight out. So let's go ahead and do one right here. Right? Yeah. I am not a cat. Meow me meow me meow. meow. Just kidding, I'm a little cat-like. Hello, New Dawn. New Day Crochet by Dawn. There will be yarn. <laughs> I remember you from last last time, too. I like that, I like that name. It's funny. Um, okay, so we got four stitches we gotta work in. Two, here. So one, two. Let's do it like this. 
You know, this guy, you ever realize how Gulliver kind of looks like Donald Duck? You do now. Maybe I should sew on the head before I sew the body on. I think I'm... Hmm. I don't know. All right, see you later, D and D maps. I'm jealous that you get to get your hair cut. I would like that as well. Can your mom cut my hair too, please? <laughs> see you later. And Manom Manom, I'll see you next week as well. Next week we'll be making um, Mr. Mr. Sir Pearl Gray's bell bag. Giant bell bag. Look at that. We're going to be making that next week. And we might even have Philip himself here. We gotta figure that out. Oh, so lucky. I want my hair cut really bad. But we ain't got no hair cutters out here. They're all hiding. Okay. So we got one leg on. I think I kind of sewed it on a little bit weird, but we'll make it work. It'll be fine. We'll do the other one right here. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Lori crocheted a triceratops today, and now you're making many more. You know, that's what I found uh, about the triceratops is it's addicting to crochet. Have you done one with the new um, the new frill? So the Triceratops has like two different kinds of frills. Uh, you should give that a shot if you haven't yet. It's, it's fun to make the other type of frill as well. Uh, yeah, this is a soundtrack from Animal Crossing. Yes, that works. Hey, wow, it can even stand up. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I didn't expect that.
There we go. I always have a more complicated time trying to figure out how to sew things together. So I'm not as able to check out the chat, but let's see. Only Angel Girl needs to go too. I know it's getting late and it's a Sunday for a lot of people in, that aren't in the US. Oh, dude, it's all good, Sir Pogre. I don't know how you would do this without all this sewing, to be completely honest. I mean, yeah, it'd be tough. It'd be tough. And, and you know, I think, um, honestly, I think sewing things together makes things look really good. Uh, it's just more tedious. But it just depends on what you want to make. I, it's kind of hard to make anything like this size and this detailed without sewing. Kind of hard. I should say extremely hard. It's like practically impossible. Okay, so we've got Al Badi. The Badi is uh, good to his legs. I think we will do it like this. And we'll have to cover up that arm. Maybe we should make him laying this way then. Like that. Because the, the stitches on the other side. Oh, but I like this eye more. Okay, so we want this eye out. And then we can do like this. Or we can do it this way around. Oh yeah, that makes sense actually. It's just the legs look like they're kind of backwards then. So we have to twist them. That looks pretty good. I like that. What's my favorite dinosaur, Way Quell asks? That's a good question. I don't know. I haven't really ever thought about that. Um, I don't know. I, I like, you know the one, the Ankylosaurus? I like Ankylosauruses a lot. And I like the one, I, I don't know the name of it, but it's the one with like, it's got like a bald, like hard spot on its head and it rams. Uh, let's do the tail. And this is when we have to decide which way is up. I think, I think this way has got to be the back. So let's put the tail here. And I think if we just take these two ends, we'll just do it like this. Honestly, I could listen to this soundtrack forever. It's so good. I don't know the name of this track, but this one might be one of my favorites. This one is like, it just screams to me Animal Crossing whenever I hear this song. Pack. See How did you know that, dude? Did you look that up? How did you know the name of that? Packy. Packy Cook. Falaxorclis. Pack. Oh my goodness, that is so hard to say. We're gonna stick with what Melbell said. Packy. Pocky. It's named after um, the 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 Japanese snack, Pocky. Pokey? Pocky. Pocky. It's called Pocky. I always want to call that pokey but it's not pokey pokey is that um that really good fish bowl you took a paleontologist
course. That's awesome. I took, I was uh, an anthropology major, so I took a lot of archaeology courses. I should have taken paleontology, though. Probably would have enjoyed that even more. I wish I majored in uh, biology or something like that. Although, I mean, anthropology was great. I learned a lot. It's just, it got a little boring sometimes. I had to do so much reading. I mean, I'd have to do that much reading no matter what the major was, is if it was in science. I originally wanted to major in interior design when I first went to school out here in San Francisco, but um, when I came out here, that was my plan, and then it turned out by the time I could major in uh, interior design, because I need a lot of prerequisites, I could have already been graduated with my anthropology degree, so I was like, oh, well, let's just do, let's just finish my anthropology degree and then fill in the rest of the classes with whatever classes I wanted. So I took a lot of like radio classes. Um, I took one class called Arts and Crafts for Leisure. <laughs> I slept a lot. I didn't go to that class very often. Uh, <laughs> it was for leisure. I did a lot more leisure than I did Arts and Crafts in that class. Uh, <laughs> Whoops. Ooh, the soundtrack of Binding Isaac. That's a great suggestion. I'm going to be using that suggestion this week because I like to listen to video game music while I work, and I've been jamming on the Outer Wilds soundtrack. If you guys have not played the Outer Wilds, I can, honest to God, not suggest a game more than the Outer Wilds. Not the Outer Worlds. That's a different game. Outer Wilds. It's a game where you're exploring a little uh, solar system, and... It is the best game I've ever played. Uh, definitely this year. It's it's one of the, my favorite games of all time. And the soundtrack, the soundtrack is so good. It's so, 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 so good. I highly suggest it. Outer Wild, check it out. It's not on the Switch, unfortunately, but I'm pretty sure it's on all the other systems. And I think it's coming out on the Switch eventually. Um, but highly suggested. Check out the Outer Wilds. I know, right? Only in California can take an arts and crafts for a leisure class. I totally agree. <clears throat> Pachycephalosaur. Oh, man. That's really... Thank you, Bob. That's a much easier way to uh, pronounce it. Did you know that my middle name is Bob? It's true. Louie Bob. That's what that's what my dad calls me. I'm named after my dad. My middle name is. I'm gonna go right here with that. I think I only got four, so one, two. There's two far back, though. So, what do you guys think? Do you think that, um, <coughs> do you think that Legend of Zelda, the new Legend of Zelda, is going to come out this year? Because they were talking about it coming out this year originally. And it seems like maybe that's not going to be the case anymore. Because we haven't heard anything about it. And it's already August. You'd think they'd say something about it to get some hype up before the before um, you know, winter. I don't know. I just want, I want a new Zelda so bad. So bad. I mean, Zelda Breath of the Wild is like probably one of the most incredible games ever created. A new one. I want to explore Hyrule again. I've already played Breath of the Wild like three times now. Yeah, Bob. 
Uh, does Mr. Loop call his metalworking shop Bob's Bending? Oh my gosh. He does now. I'm going to totally tell him that. I'll let him know you said that. He'll like that a lot. Bob's Bending. Hey, and welcome to Bob's Benders. He's, he's a metal bender. I'm a yarn bender. There we go. Make sure this is where we want it to be. Put that in, put this in. All right. We got an arm. Oh my God, dudes, dudes. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so excited about this dude. He's so cute. I'm very excited about this. Sir Pearl Gray, I have got big plans for how to share this online. I'll, I'll, I'm excited to talk to you about this. I've got, I've got a plan. You think we'll get a remake of Zelda? Well, they're working on a new one. Yeah, exactly, Pico. I mean, if, since we haven't heard anything for the new Zelda, I, yeah, I think, and I think the, um, you know, the pandemic has really uh, slowed things down because in Japan, they have a v much different work environment than they do in uh, America. So it's harder for them to um, do a work from home situation. It's just more foreign of, a, of an idea. So I think it's a little bit more difficult for them to get things together. Yeah, let's do these four. Or should I do these four? Let's see. One, two, three, four. No, one, two. Yeah, let's do these four. But yeah, I, I really would love to um, to play a new Zelda. I have Twilight Princess for the Wii U currently, so maybe I could just play that to quell my my desires. But, you know, if I want a new Breath of the Wild, I just love the Switch so much. It's the perfect system. It's so perfect. What do you guys think about the new sleep dynamic in Animal Crossing? It's kind of interesting, right? They can see each other's islands when they're not, when you don't have to go to it. It just came out the other day. And it seems pretty cool. Um, I don't think, I don't know how often I'm going to be using it realistically, but the idea of it is very cool to me. And I know that there was something like that in New Leaf, but I didn't play New Leaf as often. Yeah, I need to make a little, maybe like a little bottle too, for him to find on the beach, or 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 some communicator parts or something. That'd be funny. Okay, so we got both the arms sewn on, and now we get to sew on the head to the body. And this is the part that I find most like, I, I get worried about doing this part because I just don't want to mess it up, you know. Bum, bum, bum. So we'll go straight down through the bottom. Try to keep it in place. This might be tricky though. So please bear with me. I might go off the camera pretty often while I'm sewing this part on. And if I do that, I am sorry. I am sorry. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. But yeah, we want him like this. 
we can start like right here, I think. I don't know. What do you think? Let's see here. Yeah, and this is the great part about working with Cotton, is that we can make sure he's laying straight down still. We're gonna have to continually be like, checking to make sure it's on the right place. And I know a lot of people use pins to like, help them sew things on. I don't usually do that just because I'm lazy. But I probably might help in a situation like this. I just, I don't want to get up. <laughs> I'm so lazy. I know I just need to get up to go get pins and I don't want to. This arm is a little bit twisted, so I'm gonna just twist it back. Poor Gulliver, he's sleeping. He doesn't even know. He's a heavy sleeper, isn't he? Dude, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I do know what I'm doing, but your name is I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Says this is the calmest live I've ever been in. Chill. Chill, dude. I know, I won't forget the stuffing. I won't forget the stuffing, Lizzie. Thank you for reminding me though. But I will not forget the stuffing. I'll add that when I have just a few more stitches left. See, now here's the problem. Actually, I think I want this to go in more. Because you want it like that, right? So we need to... Um, no, it's not, it's not that bad actually. We can just go in and then we'll come out closer. We'll kind of skip a stitch to make it closer to the body. Or more more sewn on in the right direction. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> when are we gonna get that? I don't know what I'm talking about like ever. Okay. In here. Okay, and then after this one we'll now we can stuff it up. Yeah. All right, so let's add stuffing and then we'll count the stitches to make sure we're gonna get into the right place. I haven't stuffed it yet. I know, I know I'm working on it. I just like to wait till the last second, okay? To make you guys nervous. He's so cute. The scarf is nice too because it covers up the mess ups of the of the the neck stitches, which is nice. It's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Such a sleepy little cute little seagull. Yeah, I think that's kind of the joke, right? Is that he's he's a little bit um he's a little bit drunky. Mel Bell, stop it. Maybe his head does change which way he's laying. I don't know, but here's the thing. I'm sewing it on the way I'm sewing it on, so get over it. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Try that. You are just messing with me. It always goes left. Well, you know what? I didn't do that. 
So, whatever. Too little too late. One, two, three. One, two. Oh. Oh. No. Yeah, okay. I got an idea. <laughs> Why'd you have to look that up, Mel Bell? It's okay. I don't think... I'll get, like, one or two comments about, like, Hey, I'm pretty sure that the head's supposed to go like this. And I'll just be like, Shh. No one cares. It's fine. It's fine. I think we're up this one. Plus, I like this eye more than the other eye. So we have something to double knot on to. All right, just one more part. We just need to add the scarf. And twist all these legs and arms in the right direction because they're sewn on weird. Because I'm doofus. I am doofusly doofusly. How can he sleep on the beach when it's all sandy and wet? Good question. That's a good question, Stranger Danger. I do not know. Probably because he's a, he's been drinking a little bit too much uh, island juice. <laughs> he's had a little too much island juice. Just gotta get that knot back in his bum. Get in there. <laughs> That was probably really funny to see on the live stream. <laughs> Oops, wrong way. Like this. But look, I can just switch it. Oh, no, you can't because his tail's on the back. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll just, when I take the picture, I'll flip the picture. Okay, last part, guys. Last part. We're in the home stretch here. Is this bit? It's gonna go like this because this is the front of him. One of the side effects of island juice—you can sleep anywhere. Gotta love that island juice. Gotta love it. I'll just come out somewhere on the. I'm, I think this guy's looking pretty cool. I, I gotta say. I'm enjoying... I really enjoy this pattern, dude. Mr. Philip, you've done a wonderful job. Again, if you guys want to check out more Amigurumi Animal Crossing patterns, I highly suggest going to check out Sir Philip Gray. You can find his stuff. I think I've linked it in the description below. Um, you can also find it on... Um, just going to sirphilipgray.com, I believe. I don't know. Feel free to post about it in the comments if you if you've got it, Mr. Philip. And yeah, we'll be um, doing another one of his patterns next week. So make sure to if you haven't liked this video and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Um, not only does it just help the channel, but it helps you keep notified when I do more live streams like this so it's kind of fun and I'd love to have you in here again there we go oopsies there we go like that I 
I mean, it doesn't really matter how good this is sewn on, to be completely honest, because you're not going to see the front of it, but I'd rather do a better job than worse. Dude, Melbell, you are on top of it. You rock, man. You, you're killing it. We got a, we got a pro moderator here, guys. Pro moderator. Yeah, and a special thanks to our moderators uh, in the chat right now, Melbell and Sarah. They are really awesome, and they make this uh, run. They make, they help me run this a lot more seamless than I would be able to do by myself. So, special thanks to them. And special thanks to everybody who has joined in this chat. You guys make my Sundays much better. We're gonna finish this fella up and then we're gonna go play Super Smash Brothers. That's my, that's my tradition. Once I finish the live streams, I reply to stuff really quick, and then I go play Super Smash Brothers for a while. <laughs> and then maybe I watch a movie and crochet more. I crochet a lot. Okay. We're going to just double knot these guys here. Let's see how it looks. Ready? Push that knot back inside in. There we go. We got a sleepy Gulliver. That's my excited. That's my excited dance. Oh my gosh. How cool, guys. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I'm going to have to take a trip to the beach uh, today or tomorrow and get a, get a snapshot of him asleep on the beach. Philip, again, thank you so much for doing this pattern with us. I am going to be talking to you this week, and we're going to maybe figure out another one because I, I, I just think this was such a cool collaboration. And, yeah, go check out his stuff. And if you want more crochet patterns uh, made by me, go to clubcrochet.com slash browse, and you can find a bunch of them there. Thank you guys so much for joining. Thanks so much for crocheting along with me. Here's what he looks like in the front, but there's what we, this is what we're gonna be seeing more. Thanks again for joining everybody. Oh, I'm very happy to have this, uh, this sleepy Gulliver finished. He's so cute. I mean, come on, that is just too cute. What like a perfect, you know, be, oh, guys, I just got an idea. Okay. Okay, I just got an idea. Before we finish this up, I got, I got just a quick idea. I'm not going to be able to do it right now, but maybe, maybe. What if, what if... Okay, what if we did, what if we did this? What if we made a bonsai tree-like situation here where we have, I have this cool rock pot here. What if I made it look like sand and then a, a, a palm tree as the bonsai tree and then him asleep like this? It's so like a big palm tree instead. And then maybe some like fake water, like as a, with yarn that would be so cute that would be so cute just an idea i don't know Oop. maybe i'll do something with that maybe i won't look at awake gulliver he's going he's going wake up gulliver wake up all right i don't know just a thought 
Okay, guys, pasta la pizza. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you guys next week. We're gonna be making this here giant bell bag um, even bigger. This thing's gonna be huge because I'm gonna be using bulky yarn. So it should be like at least twice the size, like probably like, I like that, that big, I think. I don't know. We'll find out. Pasta la pizza. Happy hooking. Thanks for joining me uh, on this Sunday. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys. I'll stop. I'll stop procrastinating and I'll see you guys next week. Yeah, right. It would be cute. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll consider doing the palm tree idea as well. Okay. Bye bye. Oh, bye bye. Now, how do I see? I always forget how to do this part. Um, I think it's this one right there. That's the one. All right, bye.